الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said as reported by the noble companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud And reported by Imam Ahmad In his Musnad Ma qala abdun qat Iza asabahu hammun aw huznun Allahumma inni abduk wabnu abdik wabnu amatik the Prophet ﷺ said, No slave is afflicted with anxiety and grief and then says, O Allah, I am your slave, son of your male slave, son of your female slave. Nasiyati biyadik. My forehead is in your hand. Maldin fiya hukmuk. And your judgment upon me is assured. Adulun fiya qadauk. And whatever you have decreed for me is just. As'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak. I ask you by every name belonging to you. Sammayta bihi nafsak. Which you have named yourself. O anzaltahu fi kitabik. O you revealed in your book. Or you taught one of your creation. Or you have preserved knowledge of that name with you in the unseen. I ask you that you make the Quran the spring of my heart. And تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي ونور صدري and the light of my chest a banisher for my grief and a reliever for my anxiety. The Prophet wasallam said, إلا أذهب الله عز وجل همه وأبدله مكان حزنه فرحا Whoever says this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace his distress and grief with joy. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, "O Messenger of Allah, should we not learn this?" He said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ajal certainly. Yam liman, it is proper and befitting for the one who hears of this uh, supplication and yata'allamuhun that they learn it, brothers and sisters." This hadith reported by Imam Ahmad contains amazing benefits. Benefits that are important to each and every one of us because there is not one of us except we will be met with trials and tribulations. And this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are faking. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, in the Noble Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Certainly we shall test you with fear, hunger, loss of wealth, life, and fruits, but give glad tidings to the patient. Al Imam Al Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions in his explanation of the Quran, Taysir al Karim al Rahman, explaining this verse. He said, Akhbar ta'ala annahu la buddha an yabtalia ibadahu bil mihan. Allah the Most High informs us 
that he will definitely test his servants. لِيَتَبَيَّنَ الصَّادِقْ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِ So the one who is truthful can be distinguished from the one who is faking and is a liar. So the one who is annoyed and irrational can be recognized from the one who is patient. And this is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. So from this verse we benefit that each and every one of us will meet a test. Depending upon our reaction, then this will show whether we are from those people who are patient or from those people who are irrational and impatient. And with regards to this hadith, then I will use some of the words of the people of knowledge to explain it. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala firstly and foremostly, and some of the other scholars from amongst the people of knowledge. In this life, as the Sheikh Abdul Razak, he mentions, the slave is trialed with a variety of painful experiences. These painful experiences, they affect the heart, causing it to become restless, and they cause pain to the soul. Also, it may be disturbing and stressful what you have suffered and experienced. Now brothers and sisters, there's something that we have to understand and this is an important point mentioned by Ibn al-Qayyim and others. If the pain that you have experienced, هذا الألم الذي يصيب القلب, if it is related to things that have happened in the past, then this is sadness. Understand this. If the pain that has afflicted the heart is connected to something that has happened in the past, then this is sadness, huzn. And if it is connected to something that you expect or you fear that will happen in the future, then this is worry, hum. And if it is related to something that is going on in your life right now, then this is anxiety or stress. And there is no way to remove these three things from the heart unless we truly return back to Allah Azza wa Jal and humble ourselves before Allah. Surrendering to Allah Azza wa Jal and accepting His command and believing in His pre-decree and knowing His names and attributes and believing in His book and reading the Quran and contemplating upon it and acting upon it. This is the only way that you can remove sadness worry and anxiety from the qalb. And I say to you that this supplication, dua, is not something only meant to be said upon the tongue. Many people, they make dua, or they mention various adhkar, and it's just a movement of the tongue. There's no feeling in the heart. And that's why Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, Al-Fawaid, أَفْضُلُ الذِّكْرِ وَأَنْفَعُهُ The most superior remembrance and the most beneficial form of remembrance is that which is found in the heart and it is spoken upon the tongue. وَشَهِدَ الذَّاكِرِ مَعَانِيَهُ وَمَقَاسِدَهُ And the one who is mentioning Allah, the one who is supplicating to Allah, invoking Allah, they should understand the meaning of what they are saying and the intent behind it. And this is why we're explaining this hadith, brothers and sisters, today. Many people make dua, many people make dhikr, but they don't understand what they are saying and they don't understand the intent behind it. So therefore, they may not achieve what they expected to achieve. 